Vadil is a pro Fortnite player, but he's not your ordinary pro. You know, over the last few months, he's been considered one of the most skilled fighters in the world, and his tournament placings back it up. But considering that he just popped up, like not too long ago, he's gotta be doing something crazy to have found such incredible success. Bunch of crunch, Tommy, I'm so proud of you guys. I really am. Today, we're gonna be looking at what Vadil does right and what he does wrong in Fortnite. And this analysis might just blow your mind. So make sure you already know what to do. Sit back, relax. You better get some of my favorite candy. It's that bunch of crunch. Let's get this going. All right, guys, here we go. Okay, so starting with what he does right. All right, look, we could just say Vadil's mechanics are flawless, but we wanted to showcase things that he does that most of us don't even think or know about. And let's start off with this, all right? We gotta look at how he peace controls because his advanced style is a massive reason behind his success. All right, simply put, he's on another level, guys, like in a whole nother universe. And, you know, we just love seeing how many different specific build combos that he can use. All right, you guys gotta check out this skill, for instance. 60. Not. Yeah, I'm still dead. I'm still dead. Not. Not only does he instantly wall man or window edit and cone when he sees the opportunity, but like he knows his opponent is gonna get blocked from that cone. So he charges his shotgun and he gets ready. And immediately after, man, he changes his angle. He does his really, really, you know, fast window edit, grabs the wall, then quarter edits in the blink of an eye for yet another shot. <laughs> I mean, my mind can't even comprehend this. This speed, guys, yo, it's unreal. But something else Vidil does exceptionally well, man, is using his opponent's movement to peace control. Like this side box technique. Once he sees his opponent running to the left, he immediately reacts, he gets that wall up, he slides into a cone, he gets back the walls, and he secures the LM. Now, this isn't anything that's, you know, unique right here, but the speed and execution, yo, it's crazy. Same thing if, like, he's doing the cone floor piece control from above, boom, it's perfect. Or, you know, when he expects the enemy to drop, he goes down first, he makes a box underneath, and then they fall right into his trap. It's incredible, man, like, how quick he is to reacting, and he pulls out all the appropriate techniques. So, guess you could say, like, his understanding of building in Fortnite, it's just next to none. Case in point, like what we notice Vadil do all the time is place pieces through his enemy's builds. Now, coming through a box is straightforward. All you need to do is just find an area with an open space below your opponent's box. Then you aim your crosshair down there and your cone just ends up inside. But to place stairs, you hold forward on their wall, you crouch, and you tilt your crosshair up and down in this very specific spot. I mean, it seems easy, right? But you actually have to be so precise and the way Vadil does it so smoothly, I mean, it just shows us how far he is like ahead of us. This move was discovered over a year ago, yet for the longest time, it was seen as too impractical. Then Vadil came along, he just saw with a little bit of practice, it could be done consistently, and then he started using it to gain a massive advantage. So for a lot of players experimenting with difficult things, it is a setback, but for Vadil, it seems to be what pushes him ahead. To push yourself to become a better player, use ProGuides.com with our 20% off offer for 24% seven pro coaching and exclusive Fortnite courses. But I want you to be inspired. I don't want you to be discouraged and look at yourself and say, wow, like I have such a long road ahead. I want you to be inspired because if this guy can do it, you can too. Don't let anyone say that your dream is stupid or it's just too impossible. You have to believe in yourself or no one else will. All right. And I believe in you. That's my motivational moment. All right, back into it. As for what else Vadil does right, all right. He's a very creative fighter. Like, you've heard of thinking outside of the box, right? That's Vadil. He's always utilizing lesser known concepts that most players never think of. For instance, this guy's trying to ramp exploit in. So Vadil positions in a very specific spot at the front side of his box. That way, the pyramid they place ends up phasing. And Vadil's even clever enough to avoid charging his shotgun in order to not scare them off. So he's inviting them in, right? So they enter. The cone makes them lose track of Vadil, and Vadil cleans up the kill like it's nothing. And Vadil uses this front of the box position a ton since it actually shifts the advantage in his own favor since he's the one with his gun out. Though when enemies try to use the same technique on him, he always seems to have an extra trick up his sleeve. Like here, and I mean like right here, he instantly flips the ram to block the shotgun hit. That's something else Vadil does so well, editing the pieces inside his box for extra cover. Even when it's not related to building, Vadil knows so many tricks tricks. Like when watching his cash cup replays, he was literally using the zero point rocks to chase a car, hop in, and shoot at the guy's legs to force them out. This player probably had no clue what just happened. It really felt like Vadil was just trolling, but that game was a 26 kill win. So I guess, who are we to 
say. But in the rest of our analysis, what stood out was the number of kills Video manages to find in the end game. Being aggressive toward the end of a match is sort of a double-edged sword, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. But essentially, like, if he's in a low-point lobby, he's aggressing on players and just taking advantage of how most don't expect to be pushed. Pretty much until moving zones. And that's the time when he grabs hide and he just starts unloading on everybody below him. So beyond the traditional things, Badil's also really good at finding in-game kills in clever ways. Like following enemy builds to sneak up on players. Or another tactic that we saw him use was building ahead of somebody in the direction of the zone so that when they edit to rotate, he can just drop down and he gets a quick refresh. So overall, there's a lot of unique things Vidil does right. And pretty much all of us can learn a thing or two from him, for sure. But now, ladies and gentlemen, bunch of Crunch Army, it's time to look at what he does wrong. Because we're all human, right? So we're talking about one of the cleanest players in the world. So obviously, like, finding mistakes, it's not easy. <laughs> but when we look at Vidil's recent tournament replays, we notice some significant drawbacks to his W key play style. And we can learn from it. So, in our opinion, you know, one thing that he and Noah could have done better in DreamHack was engage fights in a stealthier way. You know, in a lot of their games, their drop at Sweaty was uncontested, so they got great loot, but still wanted kills and storm search tags. So they drove Holly, and for real, they just zoomed right in. The particular problem here, though, is that their opponents heard their engine from a mile away. I mean, they weren't sneaking in, so the enemy was already ready. All this guy had to do was just crank up and just wait for his teammate for Vadil and Noah just to lose their advantage. And at this point, you know, this is when things weren't going their way. Or our duo probably should have disengaged. Like, the build battle went way too high, which resulted in a team creeping up. They didn't spot them, unfortunately, so they just kept fighting it out, which is when the third party came in and cleaned up Noah and Vidil. So another mistake that we noticed from Vidil was his tendency to jump into enemy boxes. During the solo cash cup, he got into this late game fight against someone contesting his high ground. And he eventually scared the guy off, but kept pushing and pushing for some reason. Maybe he just wanted the map refresh or bouncers for rotations, but Vadil persisted for what seemed like no purpose. Again, he probably would have been better off just disengaging, but after spending 500 mats and a bunch of potions, Vadil decides to end it by just jumping into their box. A surprise attack that often works, but in this situation, he lost the aim duel. So Vadil's ammo management is usually on point, but toward the end of the fight, he actually missed out on a kill opportunity because his charge wasn't loaded. Maybe he was just a little too focused on the kill or something like that but had he backed off like we think he definitely had a shot at taking first place in the cash cup now you could just say that jumping into enemy boxes isn't a huge deal and it really isn't if you have some sort of advantage if you're missing that though or you just don't have the right info things can really backfire super fast for instance like look at this other dream hack match our boys are third partying a fight with the upper hand. Same enemies, by the way. That's when Noah eventually shoots Fremont to critical health as well. So Vadil goes in hard, but he wrongly goes after Mr. Full Health. Even though he lands the knock and he gets the two kills, Vadil dies and shortly after, so does Noah. So we think the big mistake here was a miscommunication in who the low target was. Obviously, it's challenging to keep up with everything that goes into a fight, but if Vadil was a bit more patient here and, you know, asked which skin it was that got low, he might have shown better judgment and not taking this disastrous engagement. All right, guys, to summarize Vidil's mechanics, peace control, and the creative methods that he uses in fights are all top tier, right? Like when we say he's one of the best fighters, like he really is a master in his art. But at the same time, I mean, he's often a little too aggressive in times where he shouldn't be. You know, we honestly believe that he'd be even better if he took a more subtle approach to engaging in fights rather than just going in guns blazing every time. Bunch of crunch time. I'm so proud of you guys. That's going to be it for today's video. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and and man, keep grinding. I want to connect with you guys on my Instagram at your motivation guy, and I will see you soon. Peace.